The thirty first day of Waiting on God by Andrew Murray. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Christopher Smith. Waiting on God only. My soul, wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from Him. He only is my rock and my salvation. Psalm 62, verses 5 and 6. It is possible to be waiting continually on God, but not only upon Him. There may be other secret confidences intervening and preventing the blessing that was expected. And so the word only must come to throw its light on the path to the fullness and certainty of blessing. My soul, wait thou only upon God, he only is my rock. Yes, my soul, wait thou only upon God. There is but one God, but one source of life and happiness for the heart. He only is my rock. My soul, wait thou only upon him. Thou desirest to be good. There is none good but God, and there is no possible goodness but what is received directly from him. Thou hast sought to be holy. There is none holy but the Lord, and there is no holiness but what he, by his spirit of holiness, every moment breathes in thee. Thou wouldst fain live and work for God and his kingdom, for men and their salvation. Hear how he says, The everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He alone fainteth not, neither is weary. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might he increaseth strength. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. He only is God, he only is thy rock. My soul, wait thou only upon God. My soul, wait thou only upon God. Thou wilt not find many who can help thee in this. Enough there will be of thy brethren to draw thee to put trust in churches and doctrines, in schemes and plans and human appliances, in means of grace and divine appointments. But, my soul, wait thou only upon God himself. His most sacred appointments become a snare when trusted in. The brazen serpent becomes Nehashtan, the ark and the temple of vain confidence. Let the living God alone, none and nothing but he, be thy hope. My soul, wait thou only upon God. Eyes and hands and feet, mind and thought, may have to be intensely engaged in the duties of this life. My soul, wait thou only upon God. Thou art an immortal spirit, created not for this world, but for eternity and for God. O oh, my soul, realize thy destiny. Know thy privilege, and wait thou only upon God. Let not the interest of religious thoughts and exercises deceive thee. They very often take the place of waiting upon God. My soul, wait thou, thy very self, thy inmost being, with all its power, wait thou only upon God. God is for thee, thou art for God. Wait only upon him. Yes, my soul, Wait thou only upon God. Beware of thy two great enemies, the world and self. Beware lest any earthly satisfaction or enjoyment, however innocent it appears, keep thee back from saying, I will go to God, my exceeding joy. Remember and study what Jesus says about denying self. Let a man deny himself. Testigan says, The saints deny themselves in everything. Pleasing self in little things may be strengthening it to assert itself in greater things. My soul, wait thou only upon God. Let him be all thy salvation and all thy desire. Say continually and with an undivided heart, From him cometh my expectation. He only is my rock, I shall not be moved. Whatever be thy spiritual or temporal need, whatever the desire or prayer of thy heart, Whatever thy interest in connection with God's work in the church or the world, in solitude or in the rush of the world, in public worship or other gatherings of the saints, my soul, wait thou only upon God. Let thy expectation be from him alone. He only is thy rock. 
My soul, wait thou only upon God. Never forget the two foundation truths on which this blessed waiting rests. If ever thou art inclined to think that this waiting only, too hard or too high, they will recall thee at once. They are thy absolute helplessness, the absolute sufficiency of thy God. O oh, enter deep into the entire sinfulness of all that is of self, and think not of letting self have aught to say one single moment. Enter deep into thy utter and unceasing impotence ever to change what is evil in thee, or to bring forth anything that is spiritually good. Enter deep into thy relation of dependence as creature on God, to receive from him every moment what he gives. Enter deeper still into his covenant of redemption, with his promise to restore more gloriously than ever what thou hadst lost, and by his Son and Spirit to give within thee unceasingly his actual divine presence and power, and thus wait upon thy God continually and only. My soul, wait thou only upon God. No words can tell, no heart conceive, the riches of the glory of this mystery of the Father and of Christ. Our God, in the infinite tenderness and omnipotence of his love, waits to be our life and joy. O oh, my soul, let it be no longer needed that I repeat the words, Wait upon God, but let all that is in me rise and sing, Truly, my soul waiteth upon God. On thee do I wait all the day. My soul, wait thou only upon God. End of 31st day. Note. My publishers have just issued a work of William Law on the Holy Spirit. In the introduction I have said how much I owe to the book. I cannot but think that anyone who will take the trouble to read it thoughtfully will find rich spiritual profit in connection with a life of waiting upon God. What he puts more clearly than I have anywhere else found are these cardinal truths. 1. That the very nature and being of a God, as the only possessor and dispenser of any life there is in the universe, imply that he must every moment communicate to every creature the power by which it exists, and therefore also much more the power by which it can do that which is good. 2. That the very nature and being of a creature, as owing its existence to God alone, and equally owing to him each moment the continuation of that existence, imply that its happiness can only be found in absolute, unceasing, momentary dependence upon God. 3. That the great value and blessing of the gift of the Spirit at Pentecost, as the fruit of Christ's redemption, is that it is now possible for God to take possession of his redeemed children and work in them as he did before the fall in Adam. We need to know the Holy Spirit as the presence and power of God in us, restored to their true place. 4. That in the spiritual life our great need is the knowledge of two great lessons. The one, our entire sinfulness and helplessness, our utter impotence by any effort of our own to do anything towards the maintenance and increase of our inner spiritual life. The other, the infinite willingness of God's love, which is nothing but a desire to communicate himself and his blessedness to us to meet our every need, and every moment to work in us by his Son and Spirit what we need. 5. That, therefore, the very essence of true religion, whether in heaven or upon earth, consists in an unalterable dependence upon God, because we can give God no other glory than yielding ourselves to his love, which created us to show forth in us its glory, that it may now perfect its work in us. I need not point out how deep down these truths go to the very root of the spiritual life, and specially the life of waiting upon God. I am confident that those who are willing to take the trouble of studying this thoughtful writer will thank me for the introduction to his book. The book referred to is The Power of the Spirit by William Law, an humble, earnest, and affectionate address to the clergy. End of note. End of Waiting on God by Andrew Murray.